This morning's scripture comes from Genesis chapter 12, <coughs> verses 1 through 9 in the Common English Bible. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your land, your family, and your father's household. For the land that I will show you, I will make you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. Abram left just as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. <clears throat> now Abram was 75 years old when he left Haram. Abram took his, wa his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, and all of his possessions, and all, those, all who became members of their household in Haram. And they set out for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as the sacred place of Shechem and the, at the Oak of Morah. The Canaanites lived in the land at this time. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, Give the land to your de descendants. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who, ap who appeared to him. From there he traveled toward the mountains east of Bethel and pitched a tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and worshiped the Lord, the Lord's name. Then Abram set out towards uh, I, uh, that's ar arid southern plains, making and breaking camp as he went. This is the word of the Lord. Today's sermon is a story. Scripture is full of stories of our spiritual ancestors, both <coughs> the good and the not so good. Hebrew scripture is what we sometimes call the Old Testament. It was passed down by oral tradition and often weren't even recorded for hundreds of years. These stories were told generation to generation to generation, around campfires and working in the fields and while walking along dusty paths, to remind the listeners of the God who was faithful. These aren't just stories for the sake of stories, but how the listeners then and listeners today can connect with each other and with God. So today's story starts at the very beginning. Just for some background, Genesis 1 to 11, these first <coughs> chapters of the book of Genesis, is kind of its own section of scripture, like a prologue almost. It starts with creation and ends with the flood. These were poetic narratives, stories that illustrate the origins of the world. They tell these big stories about creation and the fall and the Tower of Babel and the flood, and all of this sets the stage for God's interactions with humanity. But then chapter 12 narrows in. It goes from kind of big picture to very, very hyper-focused. And it's a different kind of writing. Not unlike chapters 1 through 11, it's not factual history the way we would read in a history book. Remember, the original hearers would not have heard any of this as literal history. But chapter 12 is where it shifts from kind of these poetic parables to the kinds of stories that get told around the dinner table family stories. Let me tell you about your great-great-grandfather Abram, your mother would say, because he got himself into some messes. Perhaps your own family told stories like this. Imagine yourself passing the marshmallows and hearing once again the stories about the people who make up your family tree and made you who you are today. This is the way that these texts should be heard. What we read today was just a few verses of one of these chapters, but today we're actually going to cover chapters 12 through 15 of Genesis, and I invite you to listen for places where you can relate, places that make you wonder, places that make you feel along with the characters. <coughs> now don't worry, I'm going to leave 
a lot out. This is going to be a very quick summary of these chapters. So I encourage you this week to open your Bibles and read those chapters, Genesis 12 through 15, in their entirety. Because I'm skipping a lot of details. But at the beginning of our story, Abram is 75 years old. He is married to a woman named Sarai, and they have no kids. That's an important part of this story. One day, God says to Abram, Leave your land and go to the land I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. No map, no GPS. There isn't even a a destination. God just says, Leave your parents' household and go to the land I will show you. Have you ever felt like that? Like you knew you needed to change course, you felt something inside telling you that something needed to change, but you weren't really sure where the final destination would be? Instead of staying safe and secure where they were, instead of staying staying where they were so comfortable and familiar without any reason or roadmap, Abram packs up his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all of their family and possessions, probably about a thousand people altogether, this big group of people, and just left. They started traveling. It doesn't say how long they traveled for, but apparently quite a while. Having been on road trips with kids, I imagine that the kids in the back of the caravan were probably saying, are we there yet? And I imagine that the camels were probably smelling, and the goats were probably smelling, And everyone was probably (coughs) smelling. They'd probably be singing some ancient version of the wheels on the bus go round and round in the back. Because this was a long journey. This wasn't a quick trip. Scholars believe this journey took them from modern day, or I'm sorry, through modern day Iraq, through Syria, down to Egypt, and back up to Israel. This is a long journey. And at different points along the way, something would happen, and God would remind Abram, that the land would belong to his descendants one day. And every time Abram would build an altar to praise God and then would keep going. Still wandering, still uncertain. At one point during their journey, they experienced a famine. There just wasn't enough food. So they headed to Egypt at that point to live as immigrants. Because the Bible is full of stories of people fleeing one place to go to another place as refugees, just as people do today. Then they meet Pharaoh. And you can read all about this later, but it's complicated and messy and dangerous. And also a reminder that sometimes even the good guys of our Bible stories get things wrong. Not only did Abram lie in the story, but it tells of human beings he enslaved because our collective history is complicated and messy. After this, they narrowly escaped death with Pharaoh. And once again, Abram and Sarai and all of their family and all of their animals are on the road. If this happened today, I imagine they'd start warming up the car, they'd pack up the Cheez-Its and Little Debbie's, That's what we have in my family on road trips anyway, for the road and start (laughs) off to the next adventure. So if if you can imagine, right, like the back of the station wagon is probably weighed down with all of the stuff for this next leg of the trip. That at one point along the way, they came across one of those altars that Abram had built earlier in their journey. An altar that reminded them of the faithfulness of God. Likely a story that they had told themselves on this path of uncertainty. Are there places in your life where you can look back and remember? Maybe even a physical item in your life that you can look at and remember the faithfulness of God from that time in your life. Abram and Sarai go on to have a lot more adventure and a lot more suffering and a lot more uncertainty. Their adventures include things like separating with family, Um, a fight involving kings falling in tar pits, and then finally, after all of that, after all of that, they decide to return home. Because sometimes when things get difficult, you just want to be in a place that feels comfortable, around people you know. Maybe it's when you turn on music that you grew up with. 
Maybe it's when you make that favorite food that your mom used to. We long for the comfortable. I imagine that after a trip like that, Abram was likely quite exhausted. Maybe hopeless. Maybe heartbroken. Maybe ready to give up. I mean, remember at this point, they had been journeying all this time. And still the thing that started it, God saying that that land would belong to his descendants, still had not come to fruition because he still did not have any kids. So God comes to Abram and says, don't forget what I told you. Your descendants will have this land. And Abram says, thanks, God, but you clearly don't know me very well because I'm a very old person and I still don't have any kids. And God says, count the stars in the sky. This will be the number of your descendants. This week, we saw images, maybe you saw them too, of new stars in the sky, new galaxies that we didn't even know existed. Can you imagine for an ancient person looking up in the stars in the sky, not even knowing what those stars were made of? The wonder and the mystery. And God saying, this is like your descendants. If you can imagine with me this story playing out, maybe kind of like a movie, this is the point when the music changes. The lighting gets dimmer, and you know something big is going to happen. Maybe there's moments like this in your own life. I believe we should pay attention to what our bodies tell us. And when my body feels like a terrifying and deep shadow has come over me, that's something to pay attention to. After all that Abram had been through, this whole journey of uncertainty and twists and turns, a terrifying and deep shadow settled over him. And the journey still wasn't over. They had been traveling all over what we now call the Middle East, they had been doing everything they could to survive. It had been dangerous. Things were starting to look up, but they still seemed to be for naught for Abram because God had promised he'd have descendants, but he still did not have children. Time was running out. Perhaps you can relate to that feeling in some way. Maybe or maybe not, with a literal bloodline, but maybe it feels like time is running out on a relationship or a housing situation or a job or some situation or chapter in your life. Maybe it feels like things are getting a little bit more desperate. Hope is feeling distant and fleeting. That's what Abram was experiencing when a terrifying and deep shadow settled over him. Scripture tells us then, here in Genesis 15, God says, quote, you will have descendants and it will be hard for them for a while. This is not a direct quote. (laughs) But they will prosper. But then it says, after the sun had set and the darkness had deepened, a smoking vessel with a fiery flame passed by. Can you even imagine that? Like a floating, smoking vessel with a fiery flame? But that is what scriptures have happened. That day, it tells us, the Lord cut a covenant with Abram that the land would be his descendants. Of note, Abram wouldn't even (coughs) live to see the fullness of this legacy. Because sometimes what God does, sometimes what God does through us, outlasts what we can imagine, outlasts us. We plant seeds and we don't even know how they will grow. It's as though God says, this might feel like it's the end, but it isn't. This is not the end of your story, and it is not the end of my faithfulness. I mean, can you even imagine what it might be like, you likely can imagine, to to plant something, to work on something, to cultivate something, 
And you know that God is going to keep using this thing. God is going to keep using this legacy. When I think about what's happening in their lives at this point, I'm reminded that not everything in life goes the way we expect. Abram and Sarai had been through so much, and still their story wasn't over. And if that's true for them, what does that mean for us? When life isn't going how we thought it would, when we have hope and then it's dashed, and then there's hope again, and then it's dashed again, and then a little glimpse of hope, and then it's dashed again, when it feels like time is running out, when it feels like that terrifying and deep shadow refuses to lift, morning after morning after morning, Where is God? Well, God was there when they left and didn't know where they were going. God was there when they had to make difficult decisions just to survive. God was there in the restless waiting. God was there in the glimpses of hope and reminders of faithfulness. God was there when that terrifying and deep shadow settled over Abram. And just as God was there with them, so God is and will continue to be here with us. We started telling this today as a family story, and I think that's what we can remember here. Maybe you have stories in your own family about times when hope (coughs) seemed lost and then God showed up through the hands of a kindly neighbor. Maybe you can look back at your life and think about times that you were alone and yet you didn't feel alone. Maybe you can look back at times in your life and see with the benefit of hindsight what you couldn't see at the time of God working through a seed that you were just planting. Do you tell these stories? Do you remember that God is faithful and do you remind others of God's faithfulness? That is what we are called to do. The good news is that God remains faithful and that God is here, even in the uncertainty, even in moments of survival, even in the shadows. God is there and God is here even when we don't know what the next chapter will hold. When we feel like plans are changing, things are changing, We can't see the path in front of us, but God is there. So wherever each of us is today, along with Abram and Sarai and all those who have gone before, those that we read about in scripture, those from our um, historical history, our ancestors, our spiritual ancestors, your family ancestors, we cling to the promise that the story is not over. Even when plans change, Even when it feels like time is running out, even when hope seems lost, just as God was there with them, so God is there with you. Amen.